Kirk Hammett, guitarist of a legendary metal band, student of Joe Satriani, and author of so many iconic solos and riffs. And he got lost among three notes. Hi friends, it's Andriy Vasilenko, and it's time to set the record straight. What is actually happening in that famous clip, where Kirk Hammett is struggling to learn a seemingly simple riff? The clip that Metallica haters took at their most convincing piece of dirt on Kirk Hammett to prove his incompetence as a guitar player. Like, you see, Kirk, bad guitarist, bring back Mustang! While the rather adequate fans are like, lol, that's why we love Kirk. They just find the clip funny and genuine, appreciating that Metallica did not fear to look a bit dumb. Yet again. But seriously, what actually made Kirk sweat in there? What is hiding behind the note in between? And what we could learn from that? There is more than meets the ear on Saint Anger. There is both genius and stupid songwriting decisions on it, and everything in between. And the album is gradually becoming a sort of weird Metallica classic. Not least thanks to some kind of monster and other videos from that Metallica period. And so besides just music, we also have tons of footage and other topics to discuss. Yeah. And of course it's an endless source of memes. Delete that. Saint Anger has its aura, which shines even brighter as we know Metallica's happy endish fate afterwards. Anyway, some kind of monster the song. It really lives up to its name. It exposes a recurring problem of Metallica – overdoing songs. They tend to put as many riffs as possible into a song, and as many variations of the riffs as possible, and as many repeats of the variations of the riffs as But while 8 plus minute masterpieces such as Orion, Master of Puppets and Justice for All, they pass in one breath, we cannot say that about Monster. The radio version is twice as short as the original, and being so badly cut, it actually did not lose much. Unlike, for instance, one that really suffered from shortening. And the song has the main riff, which is one of the most primitive and dull licks Metallica ever allowed on tape. It's like a bastardized version of already not so clever sounding Devil's Dance. Many great riffs have only these notes. Easy notes. And beautiful, bro. So it's not like a death sentence or something to a riff. A cool rhythm can make it work, regardless the amount of notes. At the same time, despite its ugliness, it does the job as the song's face and driving force. And it's still somewhat catchy. James, Kirk, no, James, Lars and Bob knew there's something about it, but they might have felt the need to counterbalance it, to include a variation with the exact opposite character. And so mid the riff, Kirk stumbled upon. Probably there were more throughout Metallica history, but they never filmed that. What a waste. Or maybe the main riff, the slow one. Kirk wrote it and James did the fast version. And then Kirk could not learn the variation of his own riff. There were instances where James improved Kirk's licks that he brought to Metallica, such as the chorus riff from Master of Puppets. <laughs> Anyway, this thrashy lick does not seem to fit Saint Anger. The album is built around groove and roughness, while this one is old schoolish, fast and tight. And virtually the only other such riff on Saint Anger is Sweet Ember's Breakdown. 
and inspiration for both can be traced back to one riff from one the machine gun one What makes this riff special is that it contains not usual tremolo, but 16th triplet tremolo. It's when three notes are fit within the length of two sixteenths. The sixteenth triplets come in best use in tempos ranging from 100 BPM to about 140. If you need some ripping in that tempo, but the standard 16s are too slow and 32s too fast. Another example of that, the middle section from The Day That Never Comes. And it's also inspired by one. They tried to make a similar section to that of Machine Gun. And that's basically it. James does not use much this technique in riffs. Perhaps otherwise it would be not that special. And Kerry Hammett can handle this technique. And the, prior to St. Anger, 15 years of playing one live prove it. And he even composed much diff difficulter, much harder riff than this one. For example, the bridge from Damage Incorporated with these broken gallops. Of course, Kirk is no match to James in terms of rhythm playing. He did not even record rhythm guitar till load. But still, even though he is not that of a rhythm guitarist, both James and Kirk recorded rhythm on St. Anger. I suppose they did not actually say how they recorded St. Anger. They showed Kirk doing some riffs on some kind of monster movie, but we are not sure who actually did most guitar work on it. He didn't do any solos on it, so yeah, he needed a job. So eventually he had to learn the notes in between to a recordable degree. But who knows, maybe James did the fast section all himself in the studio for more tightness. And the only piece of footage that we have to prove that Kirk got the riff is the St. Anger's rehearsal DVD from what we can capture when camera is on Kirk from his upstrokes and downstrokes. <laughs> Kirk seems to play correct. Maybe not so tight, but who cared at that point? You guys ready? Ready, I'm Unfortunately, Metallica cut the fast section from live performances, the few live performances of Monster. Well, they kind of play it. Monster is. But it's just Lars creating an illusion of uh, Rubilova. The meat, the notes in between are not there. So what was the problem? Maybe before I continue, you grab the guitar or bass and try to play the riff as you remember. So if you got it right, right away, congratulations! Why aren't you in Metallica yet? You know, this is the second time I sit down to play the riff. I did the first time yesterday and I thought I, I got it. I was wrong. Today I learned the correct way to play it, in the middle of making this video. Firstly, it's not the entire phrase that baffled Kirk. The opening bar was alright, pretty much the machine gun riff from one, six of the 16 triplets, and then the accident note, and then comes the second bar. Is that right? Both the slow and fast versions are built on the same framework. If you drop all the 16 triplets, you'll have the main riff. I believe that when James was uh, experimenting with this riff, different ways to fill in this. And eventually he decided that this is the most badass and unexpected variation. It's not like the one piece repeats twice. No, it's three and five. And then five and zero. It is counterintuitive to play this way. And that one might have confused Kirk too. But this is not the end of the story. What makes this riff somewhat catchy in its own weird way? After this, goes three times the same mini lick. In some way, it is a polyrhythm 3 over 4. So every time this loops, it changes the strong accent, the note that is being emphasized. And the feeling of it changes too. It 
messes with their brain a bit. And that's where the catchiness comes from. The shift in accents in music work like the shift in accents in uh, spoken sentences. For example, he left the fucking band. He left the fucking band. He left the fucking band. And he left the fucking band. And so together, the shift in accent with the shift in triplet phrasing. And then is what makes this riff harder than it seems. And on top of that, the changing drum pattern from straight 4-4 four four to the weak beat thrashy drums. And so the accents with the drums, like... And now try walking in Kirk's shoes, or rather Kirk's jacket. You are being presented with a new, brand new riff you never heard before. The rest of band wait for you to catch up, while the whole thing is being filmed by at least three cameras, which often go for a close-up to your face or your fingers. For a movie that's gonna be watched by millions of fans and haters. And the riff itself is pretty tricky. And you could figure it out in the solitude of your bedroom. But now you, be it a very shy person to boot, you are all exposed. And plus you're not much of a rhythm guitarist. So do you feel that pressure? <laughs> well, if it was the other way around, James trying to learn Kirk's riff, things could go less embarrassing due to disproportionate competence of James as a guitarist, a rhythm guitarist at least. Riffs are in his blood, but teaching them is a different kind of a mattress. Not that I am criticizing James here, but the way he tried to teach Kirk the riff might have confused him even further. <laughs> He was slowing down, speeding up, going back and forth from the drum part to the guitar part. Maybe that's about the editing. We did not see everything that would happen there. We just jumped to the conclusion from, from what we are being demonstrated. And you know, the power of editing is endless. If you want, you can make even James to look like a fool on the guitar. Well, I've done it once and a lot of people didn't get it. And that's where we are leading to. It seems like a lot of people, maybe most of the people who criticize Kirk under that video, never played the riff themselves. Why should they do that, huh? Too much honor. St. Anger is crap. Those demographics can overlap. The St. Anger haters and those who troll Kirk for failing the riff from the very album they cannot stand. But even you, the adequate fan, have you ever played it? You've heard the riffs dozens of times, at least from that video, and you saw James teaching the riff himself. It must be ringing in your ears and imprinted in your brain. I thought the same. So, conclusion. We need more footage of Kirk learning shit. There's never too much Metallica memes. Thanks for watching, it's Andriy Vasilenko, and here next time, friends. A seemingly easy riff. For fuck's sake, fucking wind.